Yo, so today we're talking about the best deck that SMSL has to offer and we're gonna be giving it away. So one of my Patreons reached out to me the other day and said, Jay, you really need a haircut. And I said, I politely disagree because what I need, what I truly, truly need is another great sounding DAC, an affordable great sounding DAC. That's why we have the SMSL D1 SE. Now SMSL made quite a bit of great DACs in the past. You know, there, there's been ones that measured well, that sounded decent, you know, and especially for the price, it was a good budget offering for people that couldn't afford a $5,000 DAC when I started out SMSL, I wish they made the DACs they made today. Just absolutely great in performance. But it didn't wow me, you know? It, price point was good. You know, the, 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 the phrase, good for the price, always applied. And it applies to every product, and that's fair, but today, I'm going to introduce you to this guy right here. This is the best DAC that I've heard from SMSL. And I think it's actually their flagship, quite frankly. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it's their flagship, but it's still affordable. $720, 720 nickels. Not bad, not bad. US nickels, US dollars. Not bad at all. I mean, considering all things. I mean, the things that we compared it to was a DAC that costs about $2,000, like the RME ADI2 Pro FS. Who names these DACs? God. And then we also compared it to the flagship um, Hollow May DAC, right? So, and it compares. It's not like it just doesn't compare whatsoever. It's not like the Hollow May blows this thing out of the water or the RME blows this thing out of the water. No. It stood on what I call non-equal grounds. You know, you're still on the same ground, it's just not equal, if that makes sense. It's still the same ground, it's still Earth. So that's what it matters. But anyways, what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna give you my reasoning to why I love this deck so much. And second, I'm gonna give this away. So for those of you that don't know, we are running a giveaway for the next five days now so check out the video from yesterday for the six days in a row we're gonna be giving away products we're just gonna spread the love and this is really us and me you know my team giving you back for all the support and subscribership the likes the comments you no know, you guys have been great so this is our thank you and this is in collaboration with the samsung event their goal is to get as many people to click the link and go to their product page and check out what's going on from the 20th to the 26th. They're going to be running a everyday different program, sales, bundles, bunch of stuff. And all you have to do to really enter is follow the description, what's in the description of this video and in the comment section of this video very carefully. Some people have been asking me, do I have to sign up? No, you do not have to sign up for anything. You just have to check out the page, click the link. Second, I've seen people copy and paste other people's comments. That doesn't work. You have to click the link first and then comment. We have a very specific algorithm running for this giveaway and virtually every other giveaway. Don't try to outsmart me. But again, you're gonna have a fantastic chance of winning one of the six items, including this person, uh, that I just reviewed, so check that review out. And today, it's going to be the VMB D1SE. $720, not as expensive as the Burson, but Burson is an integrated unit. This is a solo deck, that sounds incredible. So what's so fantastic about the D1SE? Well, the D1SE is actually the flagship line called the VMV. Why is it named that? I don't know, I'm not really interested in why and finding out why. But the Class A amplifier that I reviewed in the past was also from the VMV line, which was very interesting, sounded good, but the power was too low for most speakers. 
This is a deck that's supposedly supposed to go with that. But I'm gonna just review it as a standalone deck because as I, it sounds great with the Class A amplifier they have, the little Class A. But this is, in my opinion, overall just more value. It's more value than the A1, the Class A amplifier they have in that line. So how so? So how is this different from the every other SMSL deck? Well, I feel like the SMSL engineers finally came together and said, "Look, when we're gonna pri when we're gonna uh, you know come up with our flagship, we're not gonna do it just purely on measurement. We're gonna we're gonna actually hear the damn thing with our ears. That's what it feels like, and it feels like they did that ten times. I say ten times because this unit has filters like every other SMSL deck." or DAX these days, like the DAC Magic 200M, they all have filters, which I told you before, I find very little difference, if any, between the filters to even worth talking about. This house has something a little bit different than those filters. This has something called sound profile or sound color, as they call it, inside the settings. And in the beginning, I just thought, eh, one of those filters. I didn't really touch it until Tujin came in and then he started f fumbling around with it and I was like, whoa, what did you change? What, what, what unicorn is this? And they have nine sets of different filters aside from the standard settings. So you get 10 different sound profiles and they're legit. I didn't think I would say that. It, it is actually legit. There is the Rich 1, Rich 2, Rich 3, all of them are different. They're all rich sounding, yes, but they're all different. And then there's the Tube 1, Tube, uh, tube 2, Tube 3, Crystal 1, Crystal 2, Crystal 3. Yes, the crystal sounds like more clear. So there's some relationship there and the tube is what scared me, man. The tube is what scared me. The tube sound profiles actually mimic a tube DAC sound and we're talking about a DAC that's not a tube there's no tubes in here I I'm unless unless they're all deceiving us but it, honestly speaking I was quite surprised that this type of sound was coming from the DAC honestly I would not be surprised if SMS if someone opened this up or SMSO opened opened it up and said we actually have a little tube inside I will not be surprised that's how good it is okay there's no, for me, there's no audio file like, you know, pride, oh, I must hear a tube to get the tube sound. If that's you, then, you know, thank you for being authentic. If it sounds as close as a tube without actually having to change tubes or fiddle around with tubes or, you know, buy tubes because they're expensive, then that's a win for me. And I don't have just one setting. It has tube one, tube two, and tube three. Tube three and rich three is my favorite settings. And distinctively, they're all different. They're as different as separate DAX will get, in my opinion. So not only are you getting a slightly different sound, and yes, it's slight, you know, every DAC has a slight difference in sound, but you're getting enough of a difference, in my opinion, to go from this to this. Like you're getting 10 different DACs in my opinion. Not just a little bit of a tweak in the sound signature, you're getting 10 different sound profiles in the one unit. So not only is this great for a beginner and that's why I'm giving it away, right? It's great for people that wants to do a little bit of tweaking or people that are looking to change stuff up in their system. Because this is kind of future-proof. If you go down into a different system and you want to tweak the sound a little bit to you know, synergize the system better, you can do that by just switching the settings. And if you don't believe me, when you get this, whoever the winner is, if, or if you buy it, sit down, have your friends switch it. That's exactly what I did. The, the, the difference is so immediate. And you know, Tujin switched it and I was able to tell the ones that I liked without, you know, without even looking at it. And I asked him after, oh, I really like this one. I think this one's my favorite. Which one is it? And he said, Rich 3 and Tube 3, if I remember correctly. But again, your preference may vary. Now, it has all the digital inputs like every other units, like USB, coax, optical. So you would use optical for like TV, coax for CD players, streamers, you know, whatever 
stuff like that. And then USB, and USB tends to sound the best in SMSO units, in my opinion. Uh, coax is close second, optical is just trash. You use it if you have to and connect it to a TV. And then it has I squared S. This is the new connection that you run with HDMI cables basically. Um, but it's not sending video by the way. It's not for those of you that are thinking this, do this does not do video. No, uh, it's a better way of connecting digital products. And SMSO has been in the leading front of doing so along with PS Audio and some other brands that are coming up with it. I'm, I'm in favor of this. I tried it once and I want it back. But the problem is not many units are doing this. And now I'm going to be criticizing products that don't have this from now on. I, I, in my opinion, it's a must now. Hold on, let me... Dark Magic 200M. Nope, doesn't have it. I call this the best $500 deck that I would buy. No longer the case. See how how strict I am now? And I am very content that we need I squared S with digital products. USB is so last decade, last last, tri last trillion decade. It is so old. Like we need a new protocol that's great for audio. And I think that's the I squared S. I think Paul from PS Audio is right. I think that we need the I squared S, 100%. Anyways, enough of that rambling. This also has a preamp capability. So you can change it to fixed output, which means that you're gonna just be using this as a single loan DAC, or you can use it as a preamplifier because it has a volume knob, which by the way, plasticky, doesn't feel so great. You know, it's not like the bursting with the beautiful chunky metal, you know, volume nub this is just plastic you know it's so it's all right and the sound is grainy you know the thing about this stack is if i use a separate preamplifier like the beautiful hollow may serene hollow audio serene hollow may serene hollow audio serene or if i were to use stuff like my uh uh you know even this preamplifier this is what i would recommend if you're gonna get it this is the uh, topping, you know, pre-90. It's just a preamplifier, pretty hefty for the unit. Just made it like that. I, I hope topping makes it in black because that's ugly. Gray, you know, silver and then black theme going. But uh, yeah, no, the preamplifier on the D1SE is just meh. It's grainy and every time I use pre-out instead of DAC out on this thing, it just sounds grainy, you know? It's not bad, like if this is your first time at a DAC with a preamplifier built in, it's not bad, don't get me wrong, it's usable. It's not like there's static everywhere and there's noise everywhere, but the background is not as good. And once you've tried DAC out with a proper preamplifier, you can't really go back. It's just like, ah, ah, I know it can be better. Ah, why do I, why do I know that? Ah. You know, just knowing, right, kills the fact that the preamp is actually weighing it down. Cause with the preamp, like, this could have been a thousand dollars in my opinion. Okay, it sounds like a thousand dollar DAC. Only if they added a little bit of, you know, sound quality to the preamp section. God damn it, this would be a winner. This would be the best DAC award winner but the, pre, the preamp on the smso units like all virtually all dax just not too good man like just just not too good i don't i don't endorse this act of putting in preamplifiers that's half-assed i understand it's just a DAC. it's just a DAC. but if you're gonna add a freaking volume knob then at least do it right at least make it sound decent and go along with the sound signature of the unit. Don't do a half-assed job, don't, just don't do that. But aside from that, it sounds great and it also has XLR. So it has XLR outputs, which means that you can run long lengths of cable if you need to have your DAC far away. Remote, you get a metal remote, none of that you know plastic stuff from you know other units. This is a flagship model, right? So you get a nice metal remote. I like this remote. It's very 
very cute, very nice, and it works. Now, here we have the feet of death, I would like to call it. When they put this on the amplifier, this is like pointy spikes that has elevation. So this stack is not straight, it, it has a little bit of a tilt, and they have a very spiky spikes at the bottom. It does come with little nice shoe holders, right? Spike holders. But when they did this with the uh, amplifier they had, the Class A amplifier that looks almost identical to this, I said, yeah, that makes sense. You want to isolate the amplifier, you know? So I get that, you know, that's okay, not, not bad. And it prevented it from tilting when I put heavy power cords in. So I was like, nice. I get to save on blue tack. I don't have to put blue tack, it's great until it starts scraping around on your, you know, unless you don't, once you put it, don't move this thing. Just leave it where it is. If you, if you try to move it, it's going to scrape everywhere. The spikes on this stack is ridiculous. Remove it. Unless you like the looks. I keep it because I like the looks, but if you have any surface that you value, I suggest you put this stack on top of like stuff that you don't care about, gear, gear you don't care about, or like a towel. That's what I suggest, or take the feet off entirely because I feel like this is almost pointless of isolating the unit, almost. I'm sure there's a little bit of a difference. Um, when I took the feet off and listened to it back and forth, I heard like no difference. And also, it, it, it's the trade-off is your furniture. Now let's talk about the overall sound signature of this stack, okay? The sound of this stack is more like rich. It's definitely a richer sounding DAC than other SMSL DACs. The other SMSL DACs are more neutral, you know, gives you like input output kind of sound, a little bit of digital glare at times. But for the most part, like I said, good sound. This one, right off the bat, even at the standard setting, standard sound profile, it has this richness to the sound. It has this sound stage, it has this depth to the sound. And I'm just like, hmm, that's nice. You know, that's that's comparable to what the May offers, a $5,000 DAC. Not as good, not as good, but comparable. And then you get to other profiles and you start going, oh my God. Like the wrist resetting, the reason I like it so much is because the sound stage actually expands. And the mid the mid range, the tone and changes and and, and it, the strings sound more warmer, you know, stringy, holographic. It's almost like I put in a new amplifier with that one. The other settings are a little bit more subtle. This setting was just like And then there's the uh, tube three setting, which I found to be like running a actual tube pre-amplifier, like a good one. So I was like, okay. You know, there's more depth to the sound, more holographic sound. And then you change to like crystal and it goes like sharper, just snappier, just more focus. But it's not to murder your ears, it's still smooth sounding. So tuning, like I said, I feel like someone sat there and tuned all these sound profiles. I would not be surprised because it's done so well. Each profile sounds like it's like handcrafted, ear crafted. You know, someone list, someone took care to tune each setting. And I usually wouldn't say that about SMSL. SMSL is usually new products every other week. <laughs> this doesn't. Now some of you may ask me what chip this uses. I'm assuming some Sabre DAC chip because you know, AKM DAC chips are not as readily available. But it doesn't matter to me what chip this uses. Because I didn't think about that when I listened to this. Because one setting like the Rich 3 and Rich 2 sounds better than AKM DAX and sounds warmer. And just goes to prove tuning is everything. The DAC chip is very little into what you're actually getting in terms of the sound quality. So do I approve of this? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is incredible. And in my opinion, the best value for $720. The only reason it doesn't get, get the best award is because it lacks that preamp and I'm petty, I'm petty. 
Okay, the, the preamp needs to be good if you're gonna add a volume knob. It's misleading. That's why it doesn't get it. But other than that, honestly, the best stack SMSL has ever has ever offered on a silver platter. Subscribe.